Warning! This video contains frank discussion of matters of sexual morality. Just thought you might want to know. Hey! Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the parts of the old law which remain valid and grave today, the Ten Commandments. So far, we've talked about the first five commandments, and now it's time to tackle the sixth, Thou shalt not commit adultery. This time, homosexuality. What is it? Is it part of the prohibition of the sixth commandment? Now, the first problem you run into when discussing this particular subject is that many people in the modern world don't know the correct definition of homosexuality, and in fact, a great many have been led to believe that the word means something that it doesn't. Words like queer, gay, and homosexual have been thrown around by the media, and in the end people have believed them and not studied the subject themselves. I won't be using the word gay, because I consider it to be a political term with no reliable content or truth value. The reason I won't be using this word, and others like it, is that they imply that persons can be divided into categories on the basis of the kinds of desires that they have. Human desires are simply too poorly understood to do anything of the kind. Some are temporary desires that last only a few seconds. Others persist for years, or even your whole life. And we have no reliable way to tell the difference except in hindsight. I'm not going to classify people by their desires for this reason. Instead, we'll look at the real definition of homosexuality from the Catechism, and see what we can learn from it. Homosexuality refers to relations between men, or between women, who experience an exclusive or predominant sexual attraction toward persons of the same sex. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2357, first sentence. Notice that while attraction towards persons of the same sex is implied by this definition, Homosexual relations need not be specifically sexual in nature, according to this definition. If the relation between two homosexuals is non-sexual in nature, then it can't be a lustful act, because it doesn't have to do with sex, and therefore doesn't fit the second criteria that's required in order for an act to be lustful. I would even go so far as to say that these kinds of non-sexual relations aren't even sinful at all. Of course, if non-sexual relations between those with same-sex attractions aren't sinful, then it's also not sinful to have such attractions in the first place, and this is where many people fail to understand the Church's teaching. No desire or attraction is sinful by itself. Remember, sins are acts of the will, things you choose, and no one gets to choose what they want, desire, or are attracted to. Some people's desires are influenced by their surroundings, but even in those cases, they didn't choose to have that desire and can't choose to unhave it. Therefore, it's not an act of their will and not a sin. The problem is when the desire is used as an excuse to commit a certain kind of act, wrongfully supposing that the desire will be satisfied when you do so. The only thing about homosexuality that can be sinful is homosexual choices because only choices can ever be a sin. So, what is a homosexual choice? A homosexual choice is when a man chooses to engage in a sexual act with another man, or a woman with another woman. This doesn't refer to close friendships or even displays of affection for one another. This is only a homosexual choice if sex is actually involved. In that case, is this a lustful act? Well, Let's look at the three criteria that make a choice lustful again, and see whether homosexual choices apply. 1. Lustful decisions always involve desiring a lesser aspect of sex, such as pleasure, more than a greater aspect, such as unity with a spouse. In this area, homosexual sex is something of a mess. The fact is that the male sexual organ is not designed to interface properly with another male sexual organ, and the same is true of the female organs. Because of this, there can't really be any sexual union between the two at all, so there's no uniting of the two as a couple. Likewise, for the very same reason, there's no full giving of oneself, because there's no way for the other person to receive the gift. As for procreation, this is clearly impossible for two men or for two women. So in a way, most of what we said in the section about contraception also applies here. The two are only engaging in the act together in an attempt to achieve satisfaction for their mutual desires, which ultimately prioritizes those desires over any of the higher goods of sex. Therefore, criteria one is fulfilled. Two, 
lustful decisions always involve sex or sex-based motives on at least some level. Homosexual sex is sex-based, therefore criteria 2 is fulfilled. 3. A lustful decision can be any action, word, or thought as long as it conforms to these criteria. Homosexual sex is an action, therefore fulfilling criteria 3. So it follows that having fulfilled these three criteria, homosexual sex is always lustful and always against the sex commandment. Also, please note that because one of the primary goods of sex is to unite husband to wife, all that can be said about homosexual sex can also be said about alleged homosexual marriage, just as it's impossible for two people of the same gender to engage in the full and complete act of sex, so it's impossible for them to marry. Any claims to the contrary by news agencies, lawyers, judges, or even bills of law are mere semantic tricks, concealing the real definitions of words to obscure the truth even further. Authentic marriage is consummated by an authentic sexual act, which is impossible for a same-sex couple. That's the end of the logical argument, but other arguments have been brought forth which don't really challenge any of these facts, but instead argue against the conclusion by restating essentially a series of media slogans. Still, some people have a hard time seeing through these slogans, so I'll do my best to address the most common ones. 1. Love is love. This is one of those reasons why I don't use the word love very often. It's hard to tell exactly what this slogan is trying to say. Is it saying that one kind of sex is the same as another? That's clearly false, as we explained above. Is it saying that people's feelings for one another are no less legitimate because of gender? I don't necessarily deny that. But that doesn't mean it's moral for them to have sex. Does it mean that a legitimate sexual relationship can develop between a homosexual couple just as much as between a heterosexual one? The above evidence seems to indicate that's not the case, and I really haven't seen anyone challenge this evidence yet. 2. Why don't they get to be happy too? I think the problem with this question is that it implies more than it says. No one, first off, is fully happy in this life. That's why we need God. The claim, therefore, seems to rest on the assumption that some people are happy, but not these homosexual people who can't have sex, which is clearly a false assumption. Worse yet, however, what the statement really means is, why am I not allowed to do whatever I want in the hopes of becoming happy? I put it this way because we can't really know that what we're about to do will make us happy. Ever. More importantly, however, if you boil down the question even further, it becomes, why don't I get to do whatever I want? The simple answer is the same as the answer to any child who asks the same question of their parents. It's because it's wrong slash bad for you. If you struggle for holiness and eventually make it to heaven, then you'll no longer have to worry about things being bad for you, and I feel more options will open, though not necessarily this one. But for now, we just have to accept the limitations of our mortal existence, and that means accepting the gender that God gave us. 3. Homosexuals have a right to be treated the same as the rest of us. The rest of us also need to fight our own temptations towards sexual impurity, and therefore so does the homosexual. I just don't see that there's any difference here. Really, the only way for homosexual sex to be accepted as normal is if you already accept three big lies about sex, and probably more besides. Lie 1. Sex is mainly just the extension of emotional romance. Lie 2. Children don't have any right to both a mother and a father. Lie 3. The main purpose of sex is adult pleasure or satisfaction. We've dealt with these lies elsewhere, however, so at the moment I don't think I need to explain why all three of these are wrong, and without all three, there's simply no defending the view that homosexual sex is in any way acceptable. Next time, adultery itself. What does it mean? And is it lustful? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.